I'm Tony Covington. We are on episode five of Brains, Beauty, and Bank, and I have with me here the lovely Z. So happy to have you. Thank you for being with us, and also thank you for just, you know, welcoming us with your presence. So, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too, and it's always a pleasure to have you guys here. You guys are such a charm to always talk to and chat. For sure. How's business been? Amazing. So far, it's been a good start at L here. Um, we have been nominated and selected um, beauty, leading beauty experts in uh, beauty and health by <laughs> DC Modern Magazine, uh, which is such an honor and it's always an appreciation that we, uh, we take to heart for sure. For sure. How did you guys get selected? We, um, well, I mean, we, I, I think, you know, it's, I don't think it's that hard for uh, people to um, quickly recognize. Um, Greatness. Well. <laughs> Hard work, uh, integrity, and honesty. I think it's it's very easy to spot. Yeah. Well, this is congratulations. Thank you. You and Doctor Doctor um, L. This this is it's such an honor to be um, nominated and selected on uh, such a stellar publication such as DC Modern and Luxury. Thank um, you. And I wanted to start off by going into you know how did you get into the line of work and getting into the health and beauty sector. Um, it's a really, some would call it a very uh, congested, if you will, very saturated. So how do you, how did you start into this business? Um, yeah, I think, you know, love of beauty industry has always been something I carried with me along the way. Mm -hmm. um, since I was 16, I think it all started um, when I had the worst acne ever. <laughs> and um, truly, I did. And um, we... Growing up in a different country, I grew up in Morocco, that's mm -hmm. where I'm from, um, and every weekend we would go see grandma, see the family, you know, and just kind of like make sure that we have these connections with socially with the family. And uh, until the point where, you know, my own like family would say, oh, what's that on your face? You know, and I go see my cousins right. and whatnot. And it was some sort of like, I don't want to say bullying, but it was. Yeah. Um, but it made me so self-conscious that I wanted to do something about it, but I think the other thing that did affect is the fact that I didn't even want to go and meet people out because I felt like if they are saying that, maybe others will, wouldn't want to say it because they didn't feel comfortable. And I just hid in my house. And even at school, I wouldn't even sit next to anyone. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's, that was me. <laughs> Do you feel like it, it was more um, serious for you because it was coming, the, the initial responses were coming from your family and not from the outside world? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. And as 16-year-old, I mean, you know what you know. You have all these hormones going back and down. And, you know, you maybe could be a little bit dramatic. But what it did is that it just gave me such a... Um, uh, a love for wanting to be better mm -hmm. and learning how I can counter affect what's actually happening. Yeah. So in, in a matter of six months, obviously I've you know seen dermatologists and was able to clear my skin completely. But I think those six months were hard on my parents more yeah. so than anything because I every time I refuse to go see grandma or we have an <laughs> event or we have a wedding or your cousins want to see you. I'm like, I don't want to see anyone. Um, Did you know what grandma said to me? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing, grandma didn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> grandma is lovely. She would love me no matter right. what. Um, but I think it's just the fact that hearing my cousins are like aunts and it, 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 it just it stuck with me. Yeah. And to the point where I waited until everything was clear. But I think in those six months, I have learned so much about skincare and how to counteract things and just loved the also um, the regimens and how I can be regimented mm -hmm. and organized. And I think that's where I grew up loving the, the skincare. I think it changed my life and, and I wanted to do whatever I can to be of help to others who yeah. probably are going through the same thing. For sure. So did you start um, your practices in Morocco and then ventured over to America? Like how did you start that process? No, that's absolutely not. I came into the States when I was 19 turning 20. Okay. Um, and I wanted definitely to be in medicine. Um, but at the point um, 
that time when I first came in, it was very hard financially to be able to sustain the tuitions for being a, a medical a professional and doctor. So I chose the route to ease myself into a whole different country. This is not even my second language, not my first language, it's my third language. Wow. And having to be able to master things in a professional setting is a bit different than just being on an everyday casual um, setting. Yeah. And um, I decided I wanted to become a medical assistant um, just to get myself into the business in the field and the yeah. health industry in general and see how is it, am I going to like it, am I not? Um, but it was, I was fortunate enough to have to work in a different setting which was more like an emergency ER, it was more cardiology office and then it went to dermatology who did also like some um, surgery that was reconstructive and then it went to plastic surgery and I just fell in love with plastic surgery <laughs> that field. It's just amazing for so many reasons. I right. Mean, I feel like people come here, they're happy, they want to be happier. It's all about happy and happy. You don't see anybody who's here coming sick or you're trying to, you know, emotionally it's just hard on someone who cares. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I went through that, I experienced it through the cardiology year that I loved patients, but I just, I just hated the emotions. I just didn't like to be in that emotion. I'm such a sensitive person. Right. And I do like carry on energy so much. And <laughs> <laughs> so much. I feel like every day I go home and I'm the one who's about to have their heart stop. So. <laughs> do you feel like you take on your patient's um, emotions and you like, you try to like, okay, let me not, let me not engulf myself too much in the emotions. And I know that's kind of hard because you have to get to know them as a person to really understand their needs and their wants and what have you. Like, do you feel like you have to kind of take a step back and say, okay, let me not get so emotionally invested? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very hard to do. Um, we do see patients and I love all my patients. We share stories, but I feel like more so taking on energy is actually trying to help them the, redirect the energy. So people sometimes give you a simple example. Somebody comes in and you say, oh, how is your day going? Oh my God, I'm so tired and all this thing and work and this and that. And you're like, okay, well, this is your time. Why don't we just go ahead and relax? Let me give you five minutes. Yeah. Everybody who's came to me knows that. Um, we give them a little bit, few minutes, and just to relax. We have other things like essential oils to help them relax a little bit, and just the the, the atmosphere here is very is very soothing. It's very zen. Absolutely. And so, and now we start with them. What's going on with you? Yeah. How are you doing? And it's it almost feels like a therapy session because just exchanging those you know chatters um, really helps them realize in most cases that like you know what you're right. I'm gonna do more of that. Yeah. And then they kind of thank you so much. That felt like it was a therapy. Session I like that approach because, yeah. and I like that grace period that you give them because it's kind of like when you walk through these doors, do I really want to do this? Right. And then you have their naysayers, their naysayers saying, you don't need that, don't do that. So it's kind of like a, all right, let's give you a grace period to yeah. see if you really want to go take this route. Yeah. I like that approach. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why even when you're looking at this, the, the way we designed this place is, you know, you're looking at a the, 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 the lobby area where you come in, and there's a different lobby. Everybody comes in, I mean, there's an understanding. We're all human, we go through these um, experiences. You could have been rushing to get here and your adrenaline is pretty high and this yeah. is time for you to relax. Sometimes that affects also your attitude, the way you come into the practice and you present yourself. But for us to be just like the bigger person and understand that mm -hmm. and be able to give them like, why don't we take a few minutes and just take a deep breath and I'll, I'll, I'll be right with you. I think that just those few minutes just helps them realize that, okay, it's my time. Traffic is over. I'm here. I yeah. made it to my appointment. That's all. It's all great. It's my um, me time. Absolutely. So I know you guys, you know, specialize in a slew of services and products. What are your go-tos for, like, what do people really come in here or what are you known for? You know, um, it's a very, it's a good question because people, when they walk in here, sometimes they walk with, you know, I think wants and needs and expectations that are a little bit more <laughs> higher these days, yeah. um, given the fact that, you know, we have all these filters and we have all these apps that, you know, I think there is some sort of almost, I want to say, you know, you look at yourself in, in, in these photographs and these videos, and then you really don't accept it when you're looking at yourself in real life. Mm. And I think when people do come in, um, there is a part of a great education 
that we thrive to deliver to the patients. Um, and they come with all sorts of different, um, you know, challenges they're right. meeting. And we're able to also um, sit down with them. And it's funny because the first thing you, you hear from someone is like, I hate this, I hate this part of me, I, I, I don't like this part of me. And our way of approaching that is more so, what do you like about yourself? You and redirect their expectations. Absolutely. And also energy because, you know, we're all great and beautiful any way we are. Yeah. It's what we are. Whatever you carry is, is, is you, is the true you. I mean, we all fall through the crack because life is, is, is not fair and, and sometimes there isn't much time and, yeah. and sometimes you just need that push. And so that means that you have to knock at this door and come in and get that push and that's what we're here for. Nice. Yeah. How would you describe your work style? Because I would, I'm, you know, assuming you come in here, you have to, of course, be scheduled or pipeline at least two weeks, three weeks in advance. So in your sense, how do, how do you describe your work style? Like, how do you get things going from a day to day? Um, well, number one, I keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it real. Um, I, love, I love my day when it starts with the gym. Nice. Um, I think it really takes the stress off and it really sets my energy level mm -hmm. at a very good, um, um, very good state. And I have to thank one of the very important people that have been such an amazing um, help to me. Uh, my trainer, Dwayne yes. Turner. I know him as an unknown trainer. The unknown trainer. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he's just, he just doesn't even train your physics. He trains your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very unique. And um, it's a talent and a gift that not everybody has. Yes. Um, but that's how I start a good day, seeing him early morning and then jumping into a busy schedule. Um, you know, there's no breaks. There's no breaks. There's no breaks. And it really, my day doesn't end until I sleep. So, and I enjoy every single moment of it. Do you allow your, your clients to um, contact you after hours? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I always say I'm a click away. Nice. If you need me, you always can reach out any moment. I am not so good with phone calls, but I'm great with text messages only because <laughs> if you call me and I didn't answer, if I didn't answer, that means I'm doing something else. Exactly. And so if, when I do see the text, it's much easier for me to see it when I get to it and then I will absolutely respond. Um, but I am best reached by that. So. <laughs> Segue into that. Do you think you're too accessible? I am. Hmm. Do you like it like that? I do. Yeah, I do. I think, you know, the philosophy and, and going back to L, aesthetic arts and plastic surgery and what Dr. Lichstein, my amazing partner, um, does and I do and we have in common is the fact that we want to have a space or a destination for elevated aesthetics, but it's also wanting to be as uh, transparent as possible mm -hmm. and build relationship with our patients. The way we look at patients in general is friends and family. Right. We build a great relationship where we are accessible 24-7 if they need to be. I like um, that yeah. because a lot of people, you go into their practice, you get their service, and then you realize they're really not that accessible when you need them to be, when, you're, when you've come to them in such a vulnerable state. Absolutely. So I, I, I like the fact that you are very accessible in your, in your practice. Like we... We try not to be so accessible um, for many reasons, but I know that in some sense we kind of have to be. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a juggle. Right. It really is. It's truly a juggle. Um, what would you describe as your worst working day? <sighs> <laughs> you know, I think everybody could have challenges at work. I think the most challenge I would say is beating time. Mm. I am always trying to be on time as much as possible, but sometimes it's not in my control. Most people would say, I disagree, it's in your control, you can just do this, you can do that, but again, it just goes against like the ethics of what we believe, yeah. is building those relationships. I do, um, I am compassionate for patients who do come a little bit late. If that's the case, then I will ensure that I will see them, but that kind of like rolls a little bit back to someone right after and it gives me a domino effect mm -hmm. but just the hardest challenge is to be able to manage that um, I, I like your social media presence 
how you guys, you, you, you pinpoint pretty much everything that you do and you put it in a playful but educational way. I love that, that tactic that you guys use. And speaking of like with the running late part, like you'll, I like the video that, that you did with that. That was funny. But it shows that one, you pay attention. Two, you, you're understanding and you're gracious about it. Yeah. But, and you also know how to put a, a playful spin on it. You're not just like, you're wasting my time. I could have been, I could have had another client in your spot type right. of thing. You know, you're, you're compassionate. Right. And we, le we need a lot more people like that. Um, I don't like to ask this question because I feel like every day is a success when you're running a, a, a stellar business. But what do you consider as um, your greatest success thus far? I don't think I've reached it yet. Um, Honesty. But I like that. Yeah. I don't think I've <laughs> reached it yet, uh, truly. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. I think this is just a baby. It just started over two and a half years ago, and we're trying to catch up with people that have been in business for years. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that our experience doesn't extend to over, you know, or almost close to two decades, um, both my partner, Dr. Lestine, and I. Um, but I think we have a lot of work to do. Um, yeah. We want to see this business thrive. We want to see it succeed. Um, we want to see more staff on board, very well-selected staff on board. Um, we also wanted to drive this business into being a multi-location if possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was about to segue into the next question. Where do you see uh, L Aesthetics in five years? Um, you know, I, I hope that, you know, we, we, we reach the goals in a time manner or even before then um, to see this business thrive and have more providers in, have, you know, um, more success into, like I said, just having a, another location somewhere else. We have patients that do come to us as a destination. I mean, I can tell you countless of patients that do come from different states, even wow. overseas. Um, that's a flex. <laughs> so, thank you. And we're super happy, but we, we wish that we can also, we have a huge amount of patient, um, you know, um, number that comes from the DC area, Maryland, Baltimore. If we can have another location that be a little bit closer to them, I think mm -hmm. that's something that's on the works. So you're obviously a risk taker. Anybody that starts a business, they're a risk taker. Yeah. So what do you think has been your biggest risk so far? You know, um, I think just being in business is a, is, is, is a risk on its own. Mm -hmm. um, I think the risk for us, I, I wouldn't want to say it's a risk even. It's more of a, when you take a leap of faith into um, having people join your, your um, business, yeah. um, I think it's very important that you are also giving them everything. You're believing in them. It's like bringing someone to your home. Yes. And so the you're, risk. You're putting, for, you're putting, putting trusting them. Putting the trust, putting the effort. you also putting the, the, the finances in them. You're putting the investment in them. You're teaching them. And the risk is that one day they up and just say, you know what? I just, yeah. you know, leave. And, you know, we hope that it's always for a great reason. But it's just the risk is like, you know, you've taken everything you've been building and, you know. You're putting it into someone, someone else else's. and they can either use it or they could take it and help the business thrive or they can take it and go elsewhere with it. And I, I do believe that that is the risk because you're putting all of your knowledge just in someone and they could either be positive or negative with it. And that really is a challenge sometimes because you're also putting a lot of trust and faith into them with your knowledge. Yeah and your baby. So it's kind of like, almost kind of like giving your secrets away. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and especially for someone who is super competitive, like, I mean, when I say competitive, like, we never compete with anyone else. I mm -hmm. mean, I can tell you this, in an everyday, I don't ever open anyone else's page and see what they're doing in order for me to copy or do anything of similar. Mm -hmm. I have my goals set, I know what I want to do, I work very hard. I don't even have time to even look at someone else's. Um, <laughs> truly, I mean, it just, it's not arrogance. It's just truly a fact. I think the true, the true competition, it comes with competing with yourself. Yeah. Um, I do see, you know, where I would say, let's say, 
let's talk to my partner and this is a great idea let's go ahead and do it and mm -hmm. that's literally competing with yourself because i i know it sometimes is a little bit of an overreach but it's like a great goal to have because i know if i can stretch my energy and effort mm -hmm. and also my commitment into doing it that means i succeeded at that right. and that just takes me to another risk taking another great idea right um and I think it all ties into success at the end, right? That is. Yeah. is and it's, it's a beautiful thing, a part of that. So how have you grown personally in becoming an entrepreneur? Big time. Yeah, big time. I think, you know, being an entrepreneur means a lot of other things that you have to, to change in life. Mm -hmm. Number one is your mindset. Um, you also have to reevaluate your circle. Um, and people that you surround yourself with. I know that all uh, too well. <laughs> you, you absolutely have to uh, choose, unfortunately, uh, people that are there for you and like mind um, minded. I think that, you know, it just teaches you a lot. It teaches you patience. Yeah. Um, because you have to be patient. You also have to learn how to accept things. Um, in the sense where if you cannot control something, then you can't blame yourself for it. Mm. Um, and I need to learn that. Yeah, <laughs> you can't blame yourself for it. So uh, it's nowadays, it's like, you know, you come in, there's a challenge that's facing through the day. Can you control it? Sure, do something about it. If you cannot control it, you can't. And that's an attitude that it's very hard coming from someone who always wants to be a type A mm -hmm. and having to change into that. That was a huge um, lesson for me. Um, you also have to accept the fact that everything you do is a teamwork, no matter what. You yes. can lead, and that's great, but you wouldn't have been the best leader or a great leader or even named a leader without people that surround you and work with you every day. Right. Um, so I am super grateful for everyone. We're super grateful at Elle to have such a great and amazing team. And also, I don't think I would have been in the place where I am without the help and support of my partner, Dr. Right. Lara Lickstein. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, you know, um, we're in the, in the midst of building our team, you know, as we speak. And that was very hard for me coming from Just a Sip. I started Just a Sip, which is a hair care brand. I used to do hair in college and it just kind of followed me. So was, I wanted to start a hair care brand um, after I left the bodybuilding world. And I didn't have a team. And I feel like Just a Sip would have thrived greatly if I had a stellar team. And I took that energy and put it into Octane and then... You know, you know the story of yeah. Octane. So now, um, which I love, by the way, <laughs> I love your energy drink. So now, so now, <laughs> thank you. So now we're at the at the stage where we are now building a team. Um, when did you realize that, as you were building L, you know, coming from, you know, going from going from you know being in the career field now having your own business, when did you realize that you needed to grow a team? Absolutely, I think you know. Like I said, it all starts with a mindset, right? If you find yourself in situations when you're surrounded with people that, you know, they could, they're using your mindset, but they're not aligned with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and, and, and just in the layman terms, like working 150% for someone else who doesn't appreciate or even doesn't see your mindset. Or Isn't that the vision, hardest? It is very hard <laughs> because I'm, I'm such a loyal person. I mean, if you look at my, 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 um, my history of work, it's, it's always been I wanted to give everything I can before I, I leave. And um, just having to realize one day, you know, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do what I was told. I don't have to. I, I, I don't have to be what I'm supposed to be. Mm. I want to be who I want to be. And I think it's very different when it clicks in your mind. Everything becomes like the sky is your limit. And you have such a great belief and, and such hunger uh, to reach what you believe you want to be and have a set of goals that you want right. to reach. Um, so I think that's when I decided, like, you know, I, I can do things on my terms. I don't have to be the Z that, you know. That you want me to be. Of, right. of, <laughs> no, seriously, I think when it started, it wasn't. It was just. You know, you know what? I want to step down. I want to really like be the Z that does facial in a hole somewhere. Yeah. Right? And but that unfortunately, unfortunately, I should say, you know, um, 
it just grew that it, it was in high demand. And then I realized, wow, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't step down. Maybe people really like my mindset. Yeah. And, and, and let's just take this leap of faith and move to the next level. And if I'm going to do something, I want to do something pretty nice and large and exciting and something to help others really achieve what I always believed in since I was 16. Right. Right. That has, that, that's beautiful, by the way, because I think being an, being, becoming an entrepreneur is, is a whole task of its own, but also getting people to come on board with your mindset yeah. is a tackle on its own because no one is going to believe in Ella said as, as much as you are. Right. Right. You kind of right. almost have to rally them up and be like, we can do this, you guys. Yeah. Like, this is how we're going to do it. Right. And also let them know that they can grow from it. Right. And I think that's the hardest part for me when it comes to growing a team right. is I know that they're not going to love it as much as I do. Right. That's the hardest thing for me. And I think I want everyone to love it as much as I do. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, I mean, people would love it. They love the team. They love what you, you know, it just takes that talented team. It takes that very selected person, individual, yeah. to really see your goals and really want to help you. But at the same time, it has to also be aligned with what you can do for them. Um, I think it's always about taking what I'm giving at the same right. time. But at the end, I have to accept, and we all have to accept as you know, entrepreneurs or business owners, um, that no one is going to do the work for you like you would do for yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, the secret is learn how to do everything in your business. So you are always not in need of people, but it's great to have them. I'm not going to have you repeat that, but that was a gem. You have to know how to do everything in your business. Everything. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 What skill do you believe, um, well, another skill, that you believe every entrepreneur, entrepreneur should possess? Um, I think patience would be my first. It just be patient because, you know, things don't happen so fast. And sometimes in, in, when you start a business, it's always you have this doubt, right? Mm -hmm. We go through these circles of emotions. It's like, oh my God, I'm excited, it's a great idea. Yeah. When you start making it happen, oh my God, it's getting real. It's like having these like, you know, for me, it's like looking at emoji faces. It's like excited and, ah! and then you're like, oh my gosh, and then what did I get myself into? And then you're like, just grind every day. And I think it just pays off at the end. So just believe in what you want to be, believe in you, yeah. just be you. Don't try to copy anybody else. I mean, I can tell you countless of people that I see trying to copy and you're gonna always copy and never find the best version of you, the true version of you. Copying is, a, what do they say, is a, it's an act of, a, what do they call that, a humbleness or yeah. someone's, you know that you've made an impact Absolutely. if someone copies you? It's such a great feeling to see yeah. that. And I see it, I would tell you countless of time, like even on social media, like yeah. we will, will post something and then you know, two days later it's the same exact thing and it's like my title also is being copied I'm like, oh my god you forgot to remove that um yeah but it's okay it's okay it's one of these things like it never really makes me angry or makes me upset but it entertains me but at the same time give me a sense of confidence and a level Flattery. of like confirmation because without seeing that then I wouldn't know that I really created an impact and and it's okay. You don't, you don't ever have to have people come to you and say thank you or reach yeah. out or it's okay because you don't need that confirmation. You're already content with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. How do you deal with, with um, fear and doubt? Fear and doubt. As a human being, I think there's always fear and doubt. This is what I believe, truly. Um, if you fear and doubt and you think about it as fear and doubt, that's a negative thought that's always going to attract everything negative right after it. Mm. Fear and doubt for me is fuel to really excel and not fall in the trap of fearing what I'm fearing or doubting what I'm doubting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that just hit me. <laughs> no, because I think people, um, as, as simple as a question that that is, I think people really don't understand like when you fear, you're manifesting that fear. Absolutely. And when you yeah. doubt, you're manifesting that doubt. So those things are going to happen around you when right. you're drawing in that energy. Right. So I try to make sure as much as I can and, and, and I say my affirmations in the morning and things of that nature and I right. meditate that, like you said, I, some things that I'm not going to be able to control, 
take that doubt, take that fear yeah. out, and keep it positive at all times, as much as I can, yeah. trust me. Um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> people, I think people can, can, can hear this, and it's great. Some can learn from, some can read it, some can, can, can just, you know, listen to it. But I think it, it has to come from, at least my personal experience, I mean, I... I grew up in such a great family, great support, loved my dad, loved my mom, uh, may they rest in peace. But at some point when you find yourself like on your own mm -hmm. and there is no backup, there is no backup plan, you, you don't have that support, right. you don't have time to fear and doubt. Yes. There is no time. You're losing time when you sit down and you think, oh, I'm fearing this. I'm... No. Yeah. Get up. Believe in what you do. Try. At least if it, you tried and it didn't happen, at least you tried. Yeah. You can't just sit there and like, you know, be consumed with that energy and not being able to at least try to do something you want to do. Yeah. For sure. My biggest, my biggest fear is um, walking away from corporate before it's my time because I so want to um, thrive my business full time. But I know that um, I still have a great passion for my career. So my fear, ultimate fear is like truly like walking away. But I know when God tells me it's time, yeah. I'm going to say, I know when it's time when he says it's time. And that's smart. Yeah. And that's smart. For sure. Yeah. When, when it comes to business, um, I know you have mentors or what have you. But who would you deem like a, a role model? Like who's your biggest role model? You know, um, you know, my biggest role model of all time is my father. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Um, he's such a... He was such a, a great man, I think, you know, and, and the fact that I grew up in a family and I have no sisters and just four brothers and mm -hmm. in a culture where also, you know, females are not looked at. It's like, oh, you're a female. We take care of you. You don't do anything. And it was never more for like, oh, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. He was always sitting them down and said, listen, Z, if they are on one side, all of them, and you are in one side, I see you outweighing all of them all at once. Mm. He would say that all the time, and he would tell them every single time that there is nothing you all can do that she cannot do. I think that is a great, I think, attitude I grew up with, um, where even like growing up in holidays, um, I would get my doll, my Barbie, but I also get my pistol. <laughs> I get my boxing gloves <laughs> and he's like you play with them <laughs> and that was that was amazing and he just brought like that 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 fierce personality yeah growing up and so he didn't limit you no limits whatsoever he didn't limit you no limits whatsoever so he's my biggest role model of all times he will always be yeah that's beautiful thank you what do you see different now when you started El Aesthetics versus, well, what do you see different from when you started versus now? You know, um, there's a lot of growth, absolutely, in just such a small period of time, which mm -hmm. was super, super grateful for every, first of all, patients who makes us who we are. Mm -hmm. I just love every single one of them that walks in here. Um, it, we just have such a nice relationship, and I think my days, even when I come in to bring my patients back in my own treatment rooms, it's like, how was your day? And it's, it's, I don't ever write anything about them, but I remember every single one of them. Um, I single, I remember their babies since I, I mean, I've been seeing them since, you know, over 10 years or so. Oh. So I remember their babies. Now I'm seeing them, they're getting married or, or things like that, that it's just, uh, it's just so such an amazing, um, such an amazing relationship that we hold. Yeah. Um, but having to start in a business at the beginning to now, um, we definitely had grew as far as staff. Um, the the core culture and in, in the luxury and the boutique model, it's 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 paying off. We're seeing it. Um, we're being recognized. Um, I mean, it's just an honor to be recognized. You know, as an expert in leading experts in health and beauty mm -hmm. um, in the industry, also recognized to be like the best med spa director yeah. um, of 2022. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's such an honor, um, as well as. And you're the, so humble about it. <laughs> like, no, seriously. Like, you're, you're, you're. I mean, you're a humble person. Thank you. Overall, but like to have such a, an accolade like that. That's in. But just you, you're poised about it. You're very humbled about it. And a lot of I've seen a lot of people that get their accolades and they're just very like, 
what did you think? You know? <laughs> right. But you also, you didn't make that. That's a recognition that was given to you by people. Exactly. And I think you have to always be humble for people and be always open so people can see who you are. You mm -hmm. can't really take on a title and run away with it. A title is only a title for a period of time. Exactly. Right? So, um, but I think, you know, every time, and I always say this, even like my recognition as being one of the top all therapists in the country mm -hmm. um, for a treatment that it's very difficult, I think, to a lot of people to do, and, and, and but we succeed at it so well. Um, it's just all these titles for me, as much as they are such an amazing um, honors, it also puts a lot of responsibility um, onto you because now what, what's, what's next? Yeah. And so it, it you just puts so much pressure and responsibility that you have to beat what you were recognized for. And so you have to stay. It's like, how do you go above your own standard? Yeah. When <laughs> someone says you're the best, I'm like, oh, thanks. But, thanks, but oh, we still got much to do. Be the bestest? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, you guys have your own uh, yeah. line of cosmetics. Yeah. So, and I think, which is beyond amazing, of course. So what made you guys develop your own line? Well, you know, this is a line that, you know, has been, um, or a chemist that we've worked with for a very long time. And mm -hmm. when we saw the opportunity to brand ourselves, then we thought, hey, now that we're branding, you know, this, this skincare to us, we wanted to also demand certain changes and what we want in our skincare. And I think that's what makes it special because I can have patients come in here and I can literally just sit down at the end of the month and say, well, how many people came with this challenge? How many people have tried this and worked or didn't work? And now I do have a feedback for a chemist because this is my brand and therefore I want something that does this and this at the same time. Can you make it? Yeah. And I think that's something that gives us the flexibility and the, the ability to alter and customize things to serve the need of our patients for sure. Will you stay in-house with your brand or will you take it to distri distributors to be wholesale? Um, have a thought of that. We wanted to at least, like, I think the goal for our skincare brand is at least to be known nationally and, um, and, and also, like, you know, do great sales also on the online presence um, so far. But um, yeah. anything else that would be great, why not? But I think it just takes time. Everything that you do create, it's not overnight that people can trust it and try it. And it's such a challenge nowadays because... You know, you could have the best product out there, but, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of other influences out there and just influencing people to do things they believe in because they were given for free. We exactly. Have some <laughs> we, we don't do that. And anyone who knows or have ever had any um, skincare consultations with us, we always talk about how less is more and how we can try to troubleshoot by starting with few yeah. and really selecting what's the best for that individual. What was your flagship product? For? I mean, when you started your line, like what was your flagship? Like what was your first product? Prod I mean, there were a few. I think, yeah, the, the, yeah we, the one that we loved um, the most is that every vitamin C out there is basically like a vitamin C that's made, that's already in one bottle. Mm -hmm. We like the fact that the chemist had made a... Um, uh, the this in individual small little quantities and it actually vitamin C because it's not stable substance um, it usually this you will activate at the time of use and the fact that you can open and close in a small little bottle wow. it doesn't oxidize as much um, so that was one of the products that kind of like really is dear to my heart because it's like selling truth to you um, <laughs> about the vitamin C um, versus like you're getting a bottle this much or paying so much money. Right. Well, by the time you get to half of it, even if you stored it in a very good consistent temperature, you opening and closing that bottle affects the temperature right. somehow. And therefore you probably were using it at a hundred percent of the capacity and now you're, you know, diluting to very less than that, but still spending your money and effort. Um, Just that tidbit right there, I'm sure people don't know that. Yeah. Like, I'm sure people don't know, like, you're, you're not getting the actual full value of that product. Right. And, and, and how it's supposed to really work. Right. I just learned something. 
And we I'm call not it joking. The active C. So, <laughs> yeah, literally, this is we call it the active C because it is very active vitamin C that really um, dives deeper in the tissue. Molecules are super smaller, wow. and it's something that you can layer with something else on top of. This is my fave. Okay, <laughs> love it. This is my fave. <laughs> love it. I love it because I have, and my daughter as well. Like we, we both when and when it's our, you know, our time, time of the month. Yeah. Like this really helps us as far as toning down yeah. the breakout and what have you. Like, I, 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 I live by it. <laughs> it's, it's super, it's one of these things that is super, super gentle. It's 3% colloidal sulfur, which is amazing for sensitive skin. It's also antibacterial and antimicrobial, mm -hmm. even for patients with acne, but also patients with rosacea or parasitic rosacea can benefit from it. Good. So how can people reach out to you? Absolutely. I mean, this is LZ at L Aesthetic Arts or the team at L Aesthetic Arts and Plastic Surgery. And although some people may hear plastic surgery, it's not something that would scare people. We do everything from, we host <laughs> uh, truly everything from uh, non-surgical to surgical. Um, we um, thrive to be a destination for elevated aesthetics. So if you really want that luxurious feel, that very professional and very intimate relationship with your providers, we are here for you. Obviously, our website is the Allesthetic Arts, and then we are also present on social media, on Instagram, as well as Facebook. For sure. Yeah. One last question before I let you go. What would you tell your 14-year-old self? You were right. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for being on Brains, thank Beauty, you. and Bank. It's, it's always a pleasure seeing you. You always drop gems, beautiful gems, knowledgeable gems. And I can't wait to have you back on. And you've done an amazing, an amazing job with LSX, with Dr. L, and along with your team as well. Like You guys have flourished within two years. I know we're going to be seeing more of you, more locations. Yeah, thank it's, you. It is, it is spoken. <laughs> thank you very much. No, definitely. We would not have done it without Dr. Lickstein, the team, and also our lovely patients and peer partners like you guys. So um, thank you as well. For sure. All right, you guys. Peace out.